Hi everyone, it's here, the final part of the angel wing canvas. If you would like to see more of my mixed media videos, please like and subscribe and hit that bell to get notifications of future videos. Welcome, we are finishing off our angel wings. Just a few things that I've got here. I've got my mister bottle because today I need a very fine mist of water. So this is just a plant mister. It just mists a very, very fine mist of water. A little bit less than what a spray bottle would do. But if a spray bottle is all you have, that is fine. I've got my gold leaf and my sizing. Now sizing is just the glue that this goes on top of. If you have this, it'll work just as well. This is the Tombow. So this is when it's dry, it's still tacky. So the gold leaf can also go on top of this. This one is just a little bit more fluid and it's easier to get um, it into the nooks and crannies. And then I have got my liquid acrylics, my two favorite browns, umber and burnt sienna. And then something we need to look at then is just the background. The background can't compete with the wings. So once the gold is on, then I'm going to decide if this blue over here is too um, overpowering it's too much it almost looks like it split the wings and we might push that back a little bit with um white gesso but you are first going to finish the wings and see how much gold i'm going to put on and how is that going then going to compete with the background okay so first things first i am going to do my shadows and i have to be very careful not to over wet this because i can't put this on a wet canvas this is the sizing so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that's one drop of umber. This is the liquid acrylics and one drop burnt sienna. Okay. And then I'm going to take the mister. This is, you, you won't probably even see it on camera, but it's a very fine mist. And I just need that little bit of dampness on the wings but I don't want to over wet them okay so that's plenty then I'm going to also wet my brush and I've just got a, a round brush this is a uh, number 10 just going to take my brush I'm going to mix those two colors and I'm going to use very little and what I want to do is just create shadows in the wings so I'm just going to touch on the back ground there in the wings and might need to spray a little bit more it's a little bit dark and then we'll just dab off excess moisture I really only want the brown to really go and sit in the nooks and crannies okay so the reason why I wet it before I put this on is because this brown is quite potent and you don't want the dry paste to actually grab onto the brown so that's why I started off by wetting the wing and then I'm just now I'm just like making sure it's go it just sort of flows just into the very very recessed areas okay this goes fairly quickly I'm gonna keep going with the mister just so that I don't over wet them because we need to get them quite dry before we do the sizing that's the glue for the gold leaf. So I'm just spraying and dabbing. Okay, so you can see it's literally only going into deep, deep crevices. And that's where we want the shadows. We want to, don't want to recolor them and make them completely brown. Well, you could if you wanted to, but I, I do want them predominantly white before I put the gold leaf on. Right, so that's one wing done. Just a heads up, before you do any of this, this paste needs to be bone dry. If you push on this, it must, it must be rock hard. It must not leave an indentation of your nail or something. Then you need to wait. gonna give it a little bit of a, a dry this needs to be dry so while we're drying I'm just gonna talk you through the gold leaf 
So this is just a very, very thin leaf of gold foil. They either come like this in sheets or they come in little flecks like in a bottle. They can also be applied either with a sizing or with a multi-glue that's um, tacky when dry. If you don't have any of that, you can still do this step and then go straight to metallic wax. All right, so it is just, oops, well, Luckily, there are other little holes in that thing. That's obviously way too much. Okay, I'm just using a brush like this. It's quite an old brush. You can see it looks very tatty. So I want the gold foil or the gold leaf. I want it on the tips of the feathers. So what I'm going to do is you're going to go in with the glue and you're going to paint where you want it. Now, you're not going to be very precise about it because you want the gold to look rustic. You don't want it to look perfectly applied. It's quite tricky to see where you've been and where you haven't placed. So I'm just looking for a shimmer or not a shimmer, like a glisten of the wet glue in the light. I've decided on gold, you also get copper, you get silver, and you get rose gold. So it's like a little booklet, and this stuff is super, super, super thin, and it breaks very, very, very easily. The easiest bit is you just start with a corner, you push it, and pull. Push and pull. And then you just, like I said, it gets, it gets messy, and it gets like, it, it looks horrible so once we've got the top bits we've got gold sticking to that area okay we're gonna take a brush i've just got a small stencil brush so it's quite a stiff bristle brush now what you want to do is you want to brush off the ones that did not stick and you brush them over the areas where you still have glue Okay, so that's why I said it starts getting messy. But all these loose little pieces you can use. As long as you can get them to stick to the glue, you can use them. I'm going to finish off those other pieces in a second. What I want to look at now is when you've got something in front of you like this, you don't always get like the full picture. You know there's something that you want to change, but you can't put your finger on it. Then just take a picture of it with your camera, your phone, on your phone, and look at it on your screen in, in 2D. And then you will start seeing if there's something that you want to change or add. I'm noticing that this streak here is, is very blue. Now I like the blue, but I don't want it to compete too much with the wings. So we're going to maybe tone it down ever so slightly. And I'll show you how we do that. Okay, we're going to take gesso. I've just got a, a thick white gesso and you need a stiff bristle brush again. And I'm going to take this one, Medina Waitley. And we're going to dry brush. So the, I'm going to a round brush. And it's, this one is quite stiff, so... This should dry brush a little bit better. There we go. We don't want to take the blue away completely, but we want to tone it down. Just this area between the wings.
from the graphite pencil that I used um, to trace my wings, this has made like a little bit of a shadow here, which I actually quite like. A good one for a shadow would be your Stabilo All. I'm liking the shadow. See what a happy accidents can do for you. I'm just adding a little bit of the Stabilo All and not too much because it, it's water soluble so it gets um, quite dark if you've got too much. And that you just activate with a brush and water. So I'm going to get to take quite a thin brush and I'm just going to activate that shadow on the inside of the wing. You can do this um, as dark or not at all as you like. Like I said, don't have to do this. I had the graphite pencil on there um, that I didn't cover with paste and it was um, bugging me. So then you just roll with it. We make more shadows. Because I won't be able to get the graphite off. And there we go. Wings all done. Well, there we are. The angel wing canvas is done. I would really like to see your mix, so tag me on social media. The links are below. Before I go, don't forget to like and subscribe. And hit the bell to get notifications of future videos. <laughs>